How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be looking at upgrading a John Deere LA-130 riding lawnmower's front wheel bushings with bearings and why you might wanna do this on your own riding lawnmower. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So today in the shop, I have a John Deere LA-130 and this thing came in for pretty much a complete full service. You guys can see that we have the mower deck all painted up with some near match yellow paint. It is not John Deere, but it's close enough. I'll show you guys a picture of what the mower deck looked like before. So you guys can see the paint was completely flaked off, bare metal in a lot of areas and a little bit of rust. So we ended up completely servicing that mower deck, painted it, scraped the underside, the customer wanted three new blades installed and then sharpen and balance the old blades right there so she could use them as spares. She also wanted a new deck belt installed, so we did that. And then we have her old mower deck belt here so she can use as a spare. It does have a little bit of wear, but if she ever breaks the mower deck belt that's installed, at least she'll have a spare. And then while the mower deck was off, I ended up installing a brand new drive belt because this thing here, you guys can see completely cracked, definitely needed to be replaced. So we did that as well. But the focus of today's video is not going to be on the mower deck or the belts. It's actually going to be on the front wheels. So if we come to the front of the mower, you guys can see that the wheels are starting to angle out. That's called negative camber, and that is not good on a riding lawnmower. And the reason why that tire is doing that is because the wheel bushings that are pressed into that wheel itself are worn. So the way John Deere designed these is basically there is a spindle axle. The wheel slides onto that. It has two bushings that are pressed into either side of the wheel. Then there's a washer and an E-clip that's pressed onto the axle there. And then you have a rubber dust cap that goes over that to protect the bushing and the axle from getting debris into it. And that is one of the topics of today's video. So as you can see, the dust cap is missing from this wheel. They're missing from both sides and no, I did not remove them. I picked this mower up like this, so they probably got hard, cracked and fell off, which is not good because what happens now is you're allowing dirt and debris to get into the axle area and it will actually settle in between the wheels bushing and the spindle axle shaft itself. So I have in front of me a set of replacement metal bushings. Normally when you would pull the wheel off, you could just pop out the old bushing and install the new one. However, you guys can see, I do have quite a few replacement parts in front of me. And unfortunately we have to replace these parts because this mower was ran for so long without proper maintenance that not only the bushings are worn, but the axles themselves are worn, which require replacing the complete spindle assemblies. So if you guys notice that the rubber dust caps from your front wheels pop off, you want to clean them out and get them replaced as quickly as possible. Because again, without those, you're going to allow so much dirt and debris to settle in between this bushing and that axle. And it's just going to wear down the axle so much to the point where if we tried to just replace these, there is so much wear on this that even the new bushing has a wobble to it which will further wear down the axle and wear down your new bushings. And today we're gonna to be talking about how you can simply replace these factory bushings with some upgraded bearings. So depending on what kind of John Deere you have, you're gonna to wanna to pull up an IPL or an illustrated parts listing. Now you can see here under the steering assembly IPL, for this John Deere LA-130. It has an arrow pointing to the bushing, and if you click that, you're going to get the part number that's shown in front of you, which is a John Deere M123811. Now, John Deere does not give you the number on this diagram for a bearing that will work. So for anybody that doesn't know that you can replace these factory bushings with an upgraded bearing, and you have this wobbly wheel or offset wheel issue, What's going to happen is you're going to go to your IPL, see the part number for these bushings. You're going to replace those same bushings and you're going to end up running into this problem time and time again. The bushing's going to wear, the axle's going to wear, and eventually you're going to have to replace the whole spindle assembly. So today's video is basically just going to focus on the part number for the bearing itself. I know that a few other channels have done videos on this, but this John Deere came into the shop and it needed this repair. So I figured it was a great time to do a video on it myself and share this information with you guys. 
So in the event that you have factory John Deere axle bushings for the front wheels, part number M123811 or the replacement Stens 225130, the list cost for these are about $7. So for a little bit more money, you can go out and buy these Stens 230-128. They replace a John Deere AM127304. Now the bearings outer race or OD for outside diameter is going to measure the same as the bushings outer diameter. So those bearings will press in just like these bushings do. And the bearings inner race, which is one or two thou larger than the axle shaft itself here. So basically they're meant to just slide on. It's not a press fit or anything like that. There is going to be enough place so you can just slide that wheel on and off. The big thing though, is that these bearings, obviously because they're not bushings, are going to last a lot longer. And additionally, where you're pretty much relying on those axle dust caps to prevent dirt and debris from getting into these bushings and wearing them out, these bearings are what's known as 2RS. So they have a rubber seal on both sides of those bearings to help prevent dirt and debris from settling inside of them and also to hold that grease that's already packaged inside of them inside of the bearing to give it a longer life. However, as you guys can see, I will still be using the proper dust caps because that's the way John Deere designed this machine. So whether you're running the bearings or the bushings, you definitely want to have dust caps on these axles to prevent dirt and debris from getting in there. Now, as for these dust caps, the part number there is a Stens 285-228. They replace the John Deere M143338. However, the axle dust caps are going to be different than the dust caps used on the spindle tops, which is up here. Basically, this setup is incredibly simple. There's going to be a dust cap on the top of the spindle shaft. You're gonna pull that out. There's going to be an E-clip and a washer, just like down here on the wheel. And then you can unbolt the tie rod and pull these out. There is going to be a left and a right side spindle. They are gonna be different. And one of them costs a couple dollars more than the other for whatever reason. But in the event that you also have to replace these spindles, I'll give you the part numbers now. So the front left spindle is going to be a GY22252. And the front right spindle, which is over here, is going to be a GY22251. And just so we're clear, they do indicate via a little L or R stamp on the spindles themselves, which one is which, so you really can't confuse the two. And for whatever reason, one of them is going to be a couple dollars more than the other. Now, if you guys watched my previous video on how to easily remove dust caps, I just used a paint can opener. If you wanna check that video out, you can click in the top right of your screen. But like I said, these dust caps here go to the top of the spindles and the yellow ones down there go to the lower side on the axle itself. They're not the same part number. So if you guys are in need of upper dust caps, the part number for that is going to be an M128102. And then because this riding mower had so much damage to the front end with the bushings and the axles being so worn, I ended up buying pretty much all of the washers that I needed. So I got the washers for the top side. That's what the dust cap clicks onto up here. And then I got the inner thrust washer. And then I also got the outer washer here. And that's what those dust caps clip onto. Like I said, I didn't want to have to end up getting those at a later time. So I just got them when I ordered all of these parts. Like I said, some of the parts came from Stens and some of these parts I had to order direct from John Deere. And the part numbers for these washers are going to be a Z9972H and also a GX21931. So like I said, if you're going to be spending the money to replace your spindles to begin with, don't cheap out and just get the bushings. Go ahead and buy the upgraded bearings and it will increase the life of these spindles as well as prevent you from having to replace those bushings in the future. And the tools required to do a job like this are fairly simple. You might need a standard flathead screwdriver and a pair of channel locks for removal and installation of those E-clips, as well as a basic wrench or socket set to remove the tie rod end from the spindle itself, as well as maybe a floor jack so you can lift the front end of this machine up in the air, makes things a little bit easier. And on top of that, you are going to have to press out the old bushings from the wheel itself. So you might need something like a hammer and a drift pin or something you can use to punch those old bushings out from the wheel and press in the new ones. Now, one thing I did want to bring you back for is if you are installing the bearings into 
the wheel there and you notice that they're not really a snug fit. They're kind of just loose in there. What you can do is just take a very small hammer and give this outer edge here a couple taps to the point where the bearing will now be a snug fit and you can take something like a soft blow mallet and just tap this bearing into place. So I'll spin this wheel around and I'll show you the other side that I did that to. So this bearing here, when it went in, it slid in just like the other side. And now I could lift that wheel up by just the bearing itself. So again, just a couple light taps to the outside of that with the bearing out. And then when you go to put the bearing in, again, little soft blow mallet, tap that in and you'll be good to go. And one thing that I did want to mention just so that nobody freaks out after seeing the part numbers in my video going and spending a whole bunch of money and finding out that the bearing that you just bought doesn't fit the new spindle shaft, whereas the old bushing is a slip fit. That's going to be because of not only this sticker that they put on here, but the paint or the powder coating itself. So you're gonna have to take a wire wheel or some sandpaper to remove that sticker and that paint, and then this bearing will be a slip fit onto that axle. And make sure you guys are looking at your IPLs because again, there is going to be some inner thrust washers that you're going to have to pull out. I used a small magnet on a stick to get them out of there. And you guys can see just how much damage is on that old spindle. Again, from the bushings without dust caps, we're gonna have brand new bearings installed on this one. It'll be good to go and it'll last a lot longer. So once you get everything installed, that thing will spin all day long and notice there is no noise. It spins nice and smooth because we're now riding on bearings instead of bushings. But whatever you guys do, do not use a grinder to remove that sticker or paint. I used a wire wheel on a drill to remove the sticker and a little bit of emery paper, which is fine automotive sandpaper to remove just enough paint to the point where I can slide this bearing on. So again, you don't have to get crazy with it. Just remove enough to the point where you can slide that wheel on and off with ease. So with a little bit of camera magic, I'll bring you back once these are replaced. And just like that, you have replaced the spindles and upgraded from factory steel bushings to rubber sealed bearings. I will be wiping up all of that grease before it goes back to my customer, as well as greasing both the Zerk fittings on the spindle shaft and the inner wheel right in there so that both the axles and the spindles are greased up. And for those of you wondering, I did use a little bit of Permatex nickel anti-seize on the spindle axle shaft itself. And then just double checking everything with the steering wheel straight coming down to the front left tire. I can see that this wheel is straight. However, if we come over to this wheel, you can tell that it's towed out. So that means the front of the tire is farther away from the center line. And I can tell that this tie rod end has been replaced at some time before because it is different from the one that's installed on this side. So whoever worked on it before probably didn't do an alignment. They just went ahead and changed the tie rod itself. So before it goes back to my customer, I'll be making a quick adjustment there so that this wheel is straightened up. And it's super simple to make this adjustment. You just have to loosen off the lock nut here. You're going to undo the nut on the bottom of the tie rod here. You're gonna thread this part in, so righty tighty, so that it reduces the length of the tie rod itself, which will pull the front end of the tire in, and then you can go ahead and tighten this lock nut back up, snug up against the tie rod end, tighten up the tie rod nut on the spindle, and that's it. So for something that takes just a couple minutes while you're working on upgrading those bushings to your steering, Go ahead, check your alignment, make an adjustment if you need to. Again, improper front steering alignment will cause improper tire wear. You can probably see it right here. The lighter color on the outside of the tire means that this part of the tire has been scrubbing and now the wheels are properly aligned. So my customer will have a little bit better tire wear and this thing will track a little bit straighter when cutting. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel for new content, and as always, guys, thanks for watching.